Welcome back to the Circuit Sphere. Today, we are going to be upgrading this 2002 Apple G4 MDD mirrored drive door. This is the last generation of the Apple Power Macintosh G4 before the G5 came out. This particular model is a dual processor, dual, uh, dual one gigahertz dual processor. So it's a pretty high spec one for the time. So what we're gonna do is run some initial benchmarks to get a baseline. Then we're gonna do some upgrades. I'm gonna add an additional 512 megabytes of RAM, which will give it a total of one gigabyte. Then I'm gonna give it a more modern 250 gigabyte hard drive, a brand new Asus DVD drive. Be using these uh, SATA to IDE adapters. And after that, we'll run another benchmark. We'll play a few games and we'll see if all of this is remotely worth it. Before we dive into the excitement, I wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude. You are the reason for my passion to continue growing the circuit sphere. The support, comments, and enthusiasm you have shown have been truly heartwarming. Here's where I need your help. If you've been enjoying the content, if you've found something helpful, entertaining, or just something that brightened your day, I want to ask you to simply hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Today, I'm using my big Apple Cinema display. I don't get to use it very often, so any chance I get, I love to just seize the opportunity. So I haven't tested this. I don't know if there is any operating system. We'll see what's on there. Well, we've got the flashy folder exclamation point. So it doesn't look like it has any operating system. Might help if I plug the keyboard in so that I can actually eject the disk tray. We are gonna do a Mac OS X Leopard. I've snagged one of these off Amazon. It was like super cheap. I'll put a link in below, but it's perfect if you have a whole bunch of old disks that you're trying to keep track of. So we'll get that installed. As per usual, I got my diet Dr. Pepper. I also never get to use these. So while that's installing, I'm gonna set these up. It's a notification. Well, after all that, I think we have a bad hard drive. So I'm gonna swap that out real quick. In order to remove this drive, you have to remove this screw right here first. Give it a quick little wipe out. So we'll put our replacement drive in. I already have the uh, IDE to SATA. We don't need a master switch. I'll put an Amazon link to this below. I use these on just about every single upgrade that I do. Now let's try that install again and see if that makes the difference. All right, it took a whopping six hours to get this flipping thing installed. Well, would you look at that? All right, now that we're all logged in, I'm gonna go ahead and run the benchmarks. One of the crappiest things about the Power Max is they couldn't figure out how to put USB, USB ports in the front 
going to tell the Power Mac G5. So you got to go around back. But real quick before I do that, I want to do a plug for probably one of my most used tools in my tool belt. This is a 128 gigabyte SanDisk USB drive. It has a USB-C port, and then you slide it. You got USB regular type A. I have a brand new MacBook Air M2 that only has USB-C. So every time I want to put something on this, I use the USB-C and then I can come to these old computers, USB-A. So for anyone that is going back and forth between USB-C and USB-A, this is an excellent drive. It's extremely reliable. It's lasted me a long time. Transfer speeds are real fast. I'll put a link to her Amazon below. Highly recommend it. First things first. I think I'll be a little selfish and change the background image to the Circuit Sphere logo. Ooh, that is just, ooh, that is beautiful, if I do say so myself. I performed Geekbench, Xbench, and Cinebench 2003. We'll dive into the scores towards the end of the video. Now that we have Mac OS 10.5 installed and all the software updates done, we can proceed with the upgrades. 512 additional megabytes for a total of a gigabyte. And brand new Asus DVD drive. We're gonna start with the CD drive. take this out I'm gonna forget to take the old GPU out now we're gonna work on the thermal paste here looks like the thermal paste has been changed on this before that's a shocker isopropyl alcohol Placed. Now that we have completed the upgrades, we've got a two gigabytes of RAM, a 250, a 250 gigabyte hard drive, and a brand new Asus DVD drive. Well, let's power her on and rerun the benchmarks. Let's update the time real quick. Why does it show only 512 megabytes of RAM? Turns out we're only doing 512 megabytes because I thought I had the right RAM and I did not. I'm going to rerun the benchmarks even though we ended up not changing much hardware wise. Although my upgrades were limited to the Asus DVD drive, I performed a thorough cleaning and applied fresh thermal paste. The application of the new thermal paste appears to have significantly boosted the Geekbench score by 38%. Notably, the CPU temperature during the benchmarks showed a noteworthy decrease of 10 to 15 degrees. An intriguing observation was that the initial Geekbench test took three hours to complete, while the second one finished in just 15 minutes. In contrast, the X-Bench scores exhibited minimal variations between the first and second tests. Similarly, the Cinebench 2003 tests produced results akin to the X-Bench scores, indicating negligible changes. Now, it's time for some Halo. Halo is pretty taxing on the old GPU. And this Mac meets the minimum 
GPU requirements. So I don't expect it to run very good, but we'll see. See, Cortana says to get to the bridge, double quick. I got nothing. Well, I don't uh, I don't do loading, so we're calling this one. That does not play. This Power Mac proved to be quite a challenge taking nearly six hours to thoroughly clean, install the operating system, perform upgrades, and run the benchmarks. The PowerMac G4 mirrored drive doors marks the culmination of a design lineage that began with the blue and white PowerMac G3 back in 1999. Personally, the mirrored drive door model stands out as my favorite within this design. Personally, the mirrored drive door model stands out as my favorite within this design, closely competing with the blue and white G3. The chrome doors on the front elevate its aesthetic, imparting a sophisticated touch to an otherwise all plastic design. Regrettably, this specific G4 left me somewhat underwhelmed due to its subpar GPU. The prospect of upgrading to the NVIDIA GeForce 4 TI4600 with 128 megabytes of SDRAM seems impractical given their resale prices ranging between $500 and $800 on eBay. However, the ATI Radeon Pro with 64 megabytes could offer a reasonable boost in performance, though I remain skeptical about its ability to deliver the graphical power required for optimal Halo gameplay. In my collection, the Power Mac G5 with an ATI Radeon 9650 boasting 256 megabytes of SD RAM, and my 20 inch iMac G5 equipped with an ATI Radeon 9600 generating 128 megabytes of SD RAM excel at playing Halo. These machines have proven to be superior in handling the game, offering a smoother and more satisfying experience. Thank you for tuning into this video. Share your thoughts in the comments below regarding your preferred model within the design lineage. Remember to enjoy your pursuits. And until next time, have fun and take time for your passions. Fly so high, I'm